Hello and welcome, I'm Roy Ripper. I'm the host of the Recruitment Marketing Machine Online Summit. And uh, this is the, the online summit that's gonna teach you how to generate more candidates and more client leads on autopilot for your recruitment business. Now I'm really stoked today because today I've got one of my personal mentors on board. Uh, Mr. Josh Turner. Now, Josh Turner is a Wall Street Journal best-selling author. Um, I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not BSing you. This is a book that I read on Josh when I first kind of found found out about him called Connect. But his brand new book, and I've got that on my Kindle and I've read that sort of cover to cover, is booked. Um, let me tell you a bit about Josh. He's a best apart from being a best-selling author, he's the founder of Linked Selling which is a business-to-business -business marketing firm that specializes in fully outsourced LinkedIn lead generation campaigns. Um, they represent clients all over the world, in the US, Canada, UK, Asia, Australia, they're global, and in a variety of industries. Um, Josh's company also operates linkeduniversity.com, which is an online training program for LinkedIn marketing. Josh is considered, in fact, he is, right? If I had to say to you, who's the go-to person for LinkedIn that recruiters should know about, um, it's Josh. He's one of the leading experts in the world when it comes to growing your business using LinkedIn. Josh, I hope I did you justice with that introduction. How are you? I'm great, man. You absolutely did. Good. Thank you for having me here today. Oh, listen, Josh, we're re I, you know, personally, I'm really stoked, and I also know that for the recruiters that are watching this that don't know who Josh Turner is, they're in for a real treat right now. Um, Josh, listen, you, you help loads of different companies. Um, LinkedIn is, you know, is your specialization. Um, it's, well, it's the thing, it's like everyone knows you for, you know, for that. I think Huffington Post kind of talk about you and Wall Street Journal talks about you. Everybody talks about you as being the LinkedIn guy. How can we, um, actually let's kick off with the first question. You sure. see loads of recruiters on LinkedIn. What's the biggest right. things that we do wrong as an industry on LinkedIn? I, I really think that it's the, um, it's the same thing that other industries are doing wrong too. And it's, it's people thinking that they can just use LinkedIn and go out and, and tell somebody about what they do right. and think that that by itself is going to get you business, right? And so, you know, it's these one-off approaches where people go on LinkedIn and think, oh, I need to generate some leads and some clients. And so you, you know, you, you start connecting with people and then you immediately send them a message that says, you know, oh, hey, do you have any hiring needs? And here's what I do, and here's why I'm so awesome. I'd love to talk to you about what you have going on. That's pretty much and it. And then, you know, you hear crickets, and it's <laughs> maybe, maybe if you hit somebody right at the right place at the right time, you know, you That's can just luck, get though, Josh, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's a, it's not going to work very well, and and it's the kind of stuff that gives LinkedIn kind of a bad name because pe that's what people see happening on LinkedIn and that's kind of what turns people off of, you know, in some cases. Yeah. And so I, I really, I think that's it. It's, it's, it's trying to, you know, it's trying to go for that, uh, that right hook immediately as, you know, Gary V says in his book, jab, 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 right hook, right? Where you're, you're, you're not building value. You're not building a relationship. You're just immediately going out and humping people's legs. And that's something <laughs> I, stole from Chris Brogan and he's you know the reason he said that Chris said that because you know, we did a webinar gosh this was a couple years ago now I think uh -huh. and when I first approached him about doing a webinar together he was kinda like I don't know I met LinkedIn I'm not a huge fan of it it's just a bunch of leg humpers <laughs> what he means by that is that it's just a bunch of people trying to pitch their stuff and trying to push themselves on other people and it's it's a turnoff for a lot of people and, and so like that to me is the biggest mistake that that everybody using LinkedIn for business development could possibly make and it spoils relationships and it, it really is a, a, a short-sighted strategy I, I totally agree with you I totally agree with you Josh because you know, I've worked in the recruitment industry for 27 years plus. I've, you know, I've been a recruiter. I've run recruitment businesses. I've grown recruitment businesses, and now I coach and and train and mentor recruitment businesses. Um, and one of the biggest things when LinkedIn first came along, it was like, wow, what a tool! What an absolute tool this is! 
And then it was just every recruiter in the world just jumped on this brilliant tool. And as you said, it was just who could shout the loudest about, sure. hey, I'm here. It's like, come and recruit with me or, um, you know, come and be my candidate. I'm the best recruiter in the world. And everybody shouting in that marketplace, right. I know, just led a lo- whole load of people to switch off. I've got yeah. family members that, um, you know, don't work in recruitment that are, you know, IT and their tech and, and stuff and, and quite, you know, well, what's the word, well positioned in their own industries. I know a lot of those guys that will not go on LinkedIn because they just were absolutely hammered by IT recruiters in that space. Um, so they refuse to be on it. Yeah. You know, it's like they won't go on it. People really have their guard up to it. I was just talking to a friend of mine the other day who's a web developer, and I was asking him for some guidance on really where our salary range should be for a certain position. And then somehow the conversation got into you know that he's getting hit up uh, every other day on LinkedIn by somebody pitching him some job opportunity. Right. And and his his impression of it is that most of it's just a bunch of BS. Like it's it's also watered down now that the opportunities people are sending him, he doesn't even take them seriously because he has no relationship with these people. He's got a, a good secure job. He's making good money. He's doing well. He's not going to take a flyer on someone he's never heard of before that just sent him a message about some job opening. Absolutely. You know and. Those people haven't built any sort of relationship with him to, to make him feel any other way. Look, and, and it's, it's a great thing that companies out yours are, are trying to help us sure. you know, in business, whether it's recruiters or anybody, uh, use LinkedIn properly. So, Josh, in terms of the recruitment industry, recruiters and business owners, etc., we at the moment as an industry we use you know linkedin a lot to source candidates that's you know it's one of our biggest ponds to fish in it's really effective but is that the only way we should be really using linkedin well i mean if if you're in the recruitment industry and part of your job responsibility or if if you're you know running your company certainly one of your responsibilities is business development is is finding new new clients um and you know, if, if that is something that is part of your job, then you should be exploring how to use LinkedIn for that as well. And not just using it as a, a place to find candidates, but also a place to develop relationships with prospects and keep your pipeline of opportunities filled up. And, Absolutely. you know, that's, that's really what my company's specialty is. It's fantastic. And, and uh, Josh, in terms of... Um if somebody was brand new into the recruitment industry, if they, I don't know, they were starting up a, a brand new niche desk or they were brand new coming into recruitment and business sure. and business development was a key part. And I've, I've got to say, unless they're pure resources, every recruiter, every recruitment business owner should be, business development should be part of their, uh, you know, their daily objectives. So for someone sure. starting brand new, what should they be doing first? I think that the first thing you want to do is make sure you're putting a good foot forward. So you want to have the basics in place of having your LinkedIn profile really, um, you know, really stand out as something a little bit different than what everybody else is doing. And it doesn't mean you need to come up with some wild creative concept. It just means that you need to think about when somebody visits your profile, what's the next action you want to take? What is the image you want to portray? Put yourself in their shoes mm. and you know, think about the, the benefit they get from working with you. Don't just put in your headline that, you know, recruiter at company X. You know, put something in there that's more of a benefit statement or a unique value proposition. And and then, you know, in your summary section, you know, tell some stories about some challenging uh, some challenging assignments that you filled or you know, uh, just you know, a, a case study about a client that you help, something like that. Include some testimonials. Good. And if you're brand new and you don't have them, borrow some from from the company you're working with. You know, uh, that shared credibility can work. And I, I think it's it's putting that that best foot forward uh, is is a big one. And then I, I think it's also about standing out as 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 a leader in your space and in your industry. And that that's something that we are big on. Uh, we believe that when you create and you position yourself as an authority in your industry, that it makes it so much easier to attract prospects and for people to open the door to you to having real business conversations with them. When you're just another fish in the sea, 
just like everybody else, it, it's hard. You have to differentiate yourself. And so even for new people, there are ways to do that within LinkedIn that can really allow you to stand out from the other people, allow you to be a valuable resource to your prospects, get people to open that door for you. And it, you don't have to be like the most, you know, the world's most renowned recruitment expert to achieve that. And, right. you know, uh, Roy mentioned a couple of, of our books, uh, and you, you can learn all about our strategy for doing that in, in the books. And, you know, I'd be happy to touch on it more here today, too, if, if we have time. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Josh, look, one of my particular bugbears um, about my own industry, you know, and it's an industry that's worth a fair amount of money, you know, billions of dollars all around the world is a global based industry. Um, one of my biggest bugbears is that as LinkedIn is our tool, I'm shocked at the, 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 the profiles that are used on LinkedIn by recruiters, you know, things like photographs. I'm, I'm, I'm always amazed at the number of photographs that are a selfie. Uh, it, it's someone that's stumbling out of the bar, maybe at two o'clock in the morning, or, <laughs> or it's a holiday snap of them, or it's a picture of their cat, or sure. And, and you know, LinkedIn is a business network, right? I just I can't get over that recruiters would think that that was acceptable. Um, yeah, but they do. And then the other thing which you mentioned is. A lot of people in our industry, in fact, a lot of people on LinkedIn use that um, job title uh, space, uh, you know, field, and they actually describe themselves as a recruitment consultant or a resourcer. They don't use that real estate in the way that you teach mm -hmm. um, to, to communicate a benefit because, you know, we're not a recruitment consultant. In fact, we are, but that's not of interest to the person that's reading our profile, right? Right. Yeah, that's absolutely the case. I mean, you want to really speak to them. You want to tell them in their in that headline that they're the kind of person that you work with. Right. And then what is the the promised land that you can lead them to? You know, what is the benefit and the result that they're going to get from working with you? You know, and so there's really those two key components is identifying the niche that you serve, yeah. which that's to go back to our previous discussion, like that's another powerful way to stand out. Don't try and be all things to all people. Focus in on, on a niche and, and stand for something. You know, that, that's so huge and no matter what kind of business you're in. But yeah, I mean, identifying the niche and the type of people that you serve and then the results slash benefit you provide. If you can get those two things into your headline, it's much more powerful than just saying recruiter. Brilliant stuff, Josh. And it's, it's interesting because of the experts that we've had on Recruitment Marketing Machine, the summit, um, almost to a T, almost to a T, every single one of them has said exactly the same thing, that when you try and take your message and keep it vanilla and generic, uh, you know, to appeal to everybody, you end up missing everybody. Um, yeah. and, and the more you can speak to the one person, if you can really direct your message to be able to speak to the one person, you end yeah. up attracting that type of person, but in droves. Yep. Absolutely. It's good stuff. Really, really good stuff. Now, in, in terms of, um, you know, I talked there about for someone getting started, but Josh, you know, recruiters have been over LinkedIn, you know, for, for quite a while. There's some very, very experienced recruiters all around the world that have used LinkedIn for many years. They, they think, you know, it's like we think as an industry, yeah, we do OK. You know, our profile's up there. Uh, it gets us a certain amount of attention. It gets the job done. Are there any yeah. advanced strategies that you could share with those people today? They're watching this and they're going, come on, Josh Turner, yeah. tell me something I didn't know. Right. Uh, what, what would you share with us? <laughs> the, there's a couple specific things that I would recommend. And, and again, you know, you can check out one of my books to get the details on these. Um, but in a nutshell, I would say that the the biggest issue that most people have, even if they've been using LinkedIn a long time and feel like they're pretty advanced and they've got their profile structured really well and all that, there is that they're not carving out a proactive plan for how to bring new prospects into their funnel on LinkedIn and then how to strategically work those people through campaigns that are going to move them toward becoming a, a you know in, into real world business conversations because right. LinkedIn doesn't sell anything. No. LinkedIn is a tool for getting in front of people and moving them into real world conversations. So there's really two specific strategies that, that I'll throw out there right now for, for everybody. 
Um, one of them is to position yourself as an authority and a leader in whatever niche you serve by creating a group around that industry. So instead of a lot of recruiters will, you know, creating LinkedIn groups, not a new concept, but most people go wrong by creating a group all about their subject matter expertise. The problem is, is that your clients do not give a shit about a recruitment group. They're not going to join it. No. And they, they don't care about it. They don't no. want to immerse themselves in that topic. So what you need to do is identify your niche. And let's say, uh, I'm just going to use a, a, a client example. One of our clients is a, a guy named Tom Swip. He runs an IT company. Right. Well, if he were to create a group all about IT, no one would want to be a part of it. His prospects wouldn't. It would just be full of competitors. So yeah. instead, we helped him create a group called Midwest Manufacturing Leaders to target manufacturing CEOs and CFOs. Right. And now he's got a community full of those people. The group is full of resources that, that they love and that they're getting a lot of value out of. And every once in a while, he can slip in something about what he does. And it just it positions him in a way where they see him as a leader in that niche and in that industry. Yeah. And he keeps his name in front of them over and over and over again in a really positive way. It deepens the relationship. And then the second component of it is then working those people through personal messaging campaigns to deepen the relationship even further. And there's an art and a science to doing that. Uh, but you can read all about that in, in our books. And at the end of the day, I mean, those are the strategies that, that it, it, we really teach that we find to be the most powerful. Find a way to position yourself as a leader in whatever niche you serve. Yeah. And then utilize the power of LinkedIn's messaging platform to move those people into real world business conversations. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And you're right. By um, your example there, was it Brian and the IT company? Uh, Tom. Tom, sorry. With 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 Tom, um, he becomes the leader, the authority of that group. He just happens to have an IT company as well, right? That's that's how they yes. kind of view him. He's the leader of the group. He happens to have an IT uh, consultancy or whatever business uh, yep. alongside it, and and people then reach out to to to, to him to group uh, to group leaders, right? Yes, people reach out to him. It becomes kind of a. Uh, an inbound funnel over time because now there's six, seven thousand members in the group. I'm not sure exactly how many, but the momentum just really snowballs and gets to a point where, you know, it LinkedIn just brings opportunities to him because he has stayed in front of these people for so long in such a positive way, mm. you know. And so we, you know, there's there's all sorts of benefits to that. It's not just even about the lead generation at that point. It becomes this like marketing machine, this really, really tremendous asset that he has that his competition really would have a tough time dislodging him from at this point. It's one of the things, it's interesting you talk there about the side benefits of, of mm -hmm. owning a group. And one of the things I've found, um, you know, I have several groups, but, but um, one of them, Global Recruitment People, People yeah. will go to, and the biggest benefit that I get is not necessarily lead generation, it's content ideas. So, mm. you know, I look at it and I see the things that are being posted, I th see the things that are being commented on, uh, the questions that are being asked. And what that does, Josh, it, it says to me, hang on a second, these are the issues and challenges being faced by my tribe, my audience. And then, of course, I can yeah. then tweet about those things, I can blog about those things, I can create video around those things, knowing this is this answers the exact conversation going on in the mind of uh, of my prospect. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really smart. There are, there are so many ways to utilize this stuff. I mean, not only getting content ideas, but then also content distribution. So if you're doing things like blogging and such, it just, you know, it's a tremendous asset there. We haven't even talked about LinkedIn Pulse, publishing long form articles there, all of that stuff. You know, there's there's so many different facets of LinkedIn that you can explore just depending on what your goals are. It's brilliant. Um, how much time would it take? Could, you know, look, the biggest question that I get asked is, Roy, you know, something content marketing and or, or using things like LinkedIn to uh, business generate takes time. It's like I haven't got sure. time. I'm a recruiter, right? You know, I need to be on phones. I need to be making money and bringing deals together. I don't have time to spend on LinkedIn strategies, business generation strategies, lead generation strategies. What would sure. you say to those people that tell you they don't have time? Well, if you don't have time, you got to figure out what, what the priorities are. I mean, I, I, I'm a 
big proponent of the fact that you know you don't have a time issue you have a prioritization issue yeah. and you gotta look at you know what are the priorities and if if generating new opportunities and generating leads isn't one of your higher priorities then at some point your pipeline is gonna dry up you have to have a system in place to keep new prospects coming in yeah. otherwise your business will be in a constant state of peaks and valleys where you know one month you're really busy and you're doing client work and the billings are feeling good and then the next month things slow down mm -hmm. because when things were good you didn't have time to work on business development and so the pipeline's low and then you go into marketing mode and you then you kind of ramp back up as you get some business and then it goes down again and it's like that's a terrible way to live and I mean you got to figure out a way to have a consistent marketing presence so that you can you know really even out those peaks and valleys and have a uh, a more sane life and a, and a more steady business and um, so that's one one thing I would say now to talk about specifically okay great I'm gonna commit the time how much time do I need to commit yeah we have a program called the appointment generator where we teach the the systems that that uh, you can read about in my book and it's a coaching program to help people implement it brilliant and we recommend people commit anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes a day five days a week implementing the strategy so if you have if you have a half hour a day that you can devote to implementing the strategies we teach on LinkedIn, you can get serious results. I mean, in that program, we guarantee that people will generate 15 appointments a month. Whoa. And so there's, you know, it's, yes, a half hour a day. Some people might be saying, well, I got, where am I going to find that time? But I know there's other people on this call right now who are just like, you know, would love to find a way to just take a half hour a day and know, do these things to get these results. Because I know you know when I was starting my business like I would have those days where I would wake up in the morning before I really had a system I could rely on and I would just sit in front of my computer wondering like what should I be doing to try and get some business in the door right wow. and and that's that's a big problem that we solve for people with this system you know and if you're too busy to spend a half hour five days a week implementing it then maybe your business is doing so well you don't need more leads or you need to find somebody else on your team that can help you implement the process. Josh, that's that's great advice and, and you're right. Look, most recruiters will be on LinkedIn, okay? They will be on LinkedIn. Whether they're using the t their, you know, their time uh, most effectively on LinkedIn, sure. I would hazard a guess some of them are looking at Facebook and maybe it's not pure business generation. But for, sure. them, but, but for them to commit to just 30 minutes to 60 minutes a day on LinkedIn with that kind of ROI, 15 appointments a month from that activity, I don't think there's a recruiter in the world that won't bite your arm off for that. Um, the, the other thing that occurs to me, Josh, and look, I know something of your story, I know, you know the inspiration for you doing the work you do was yeah. a lot to do with your dad and you know the business that he started and when the yeah. going was great, it's like, you know, there were cars and vacations and everything else. And then when the market dried up for him, it's like, you know, that business almost closed overnight. And right. I, and just what you said there about business generation uh, and lead generation, recruiters all over the world will be very, very familiar with that roller coaster of, uh, of revenue that you described you know it's like when the going's great it's like yeah I've got loads of leads coming in and loads of business I know what I'm doing and then all of a sudden that tails off and then you kick yourself up the butt and you start you know prospecting the problem with that that that, that we find is that as soon as you stop doing an activity it actually becomes harder to ramp that up again whereas to do mm. commit to a, a 30 minutes per day I mean that's nothing commit to 30 minutes a day to build your pipeline, um, all of a sudden it's not, you know, you're not doing that, oh my God, it's really hard to do this activity. You're on the roll. It's like, I know what I'm doing 30 minutes every day. These are the activities. Yeah. And that pipeline is going to be kept full and healthy for a long time. No doubt about it. And, you know, you mentioned that people are spending time on Facebook. Maybe it's not the most productive time they're spending. There was a study that came out, I don't know when, not too long ago, that showed that the average American spends three hours a day using social media. Wow. You know, and so, you know, nobody on this call probably would admit that they're spending that amount of time on social media. But we are all wasting some time there. I will even admit that I'm wasting a little bit of time there. And yeah. so whenever I... Whenever I see something like this, I, what I like to tell folks that are telling me that they don't have time to implement it is that 
you know, let's just take some of the time you're already spending on social media that maybe isn't really producing results for you and reallocate it and invest that time over here. It's really you know, good. and and because then like you said, if you've got that consistent system, you're going to avoid those those peaks and valleys. Really really good advice. Thank you. Um, Josh, look, I, I, I know that I could go on talking to you forever, and, and I also know that your strategies work, right? I know you've talked about the books, and I really would encourage people that are watching this and listening to this. Josh Turner's stuff works, and it works for our industry. So, you know, for the cost of a book, I would say to you, go and get, go and buy those books. Even if it's just to experience Josh Turner and that, that, that learning. So Connect is one of those books. Booked is another one in terms of getting you more appointments, using LinkedIn to generate more appointments for you. Josh also mentioned there um, the, 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 the mastery program. What do you call it, Josh? I'm so sorry. The appointment generator. The appointment generator. Experience Josh's work and then look at the appointment generator because you know, working through a program that gives you that kind of return, I just think we'd be crazy not to look at it. Um, Josh, the, the only thing that remains is, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you uh, sort of after this show? Sure, I mean, I would be happy to connect with anybody on LinkedIn. Um, look me up there, send me a request, make sure you let me know that Roy sent you so that I know who you are. That's another thing, connection requests that come through that don't have any personal message, you know, you're just shooting yourself in the foot when you do that, no matter who you're sending them to. Um, so that's a great way to get in touch with me. You can go to our website, linkedselling.com, to read more about the work we do as well. Fantastic. Josh, listen, you've been a great guest, an, an expert speaker, and, and very generous in terms of your knowledge as well. Thank you. I really, really appreciate you turning out for us today. Well, I'm grateful to be here, man. This has been a lot of fun, so thank you, Roy. Fantastic. Take care. Bye-bye.